specialist researchers in Volgograd, Russia, have discovered over a dozen ancient disc-shaped objects which they strongly believe to be the remnants of several crashed UFOs, including one object which is over 4 meters in diameter. According to experts, these strange out-of-place disks are coated in a thick layer of tungsten, a high-density metal often used in military technology. Kosmopoisk, the team who made the discoveries, is a notorious Russian UFO and cryptozoology research group. They were performing excavations in the district in an attempt to locate these specific unknown objects. They believe, yet will not share where this information originated from, that these tungsten disks are in fact the remnants of several alien craft which crashed in the area during a quote, event. We had already found about a dozen of these disks. Most of them had a diameter of around one meter. At Kuzbas, we uncovered a disc-shaped object with a diameter of nearly two meters. But this new disc is a unique and impressive find, a member of the team said. The shape of the four-meter disc is extremely similar to that of our modern-day interpretations of UFOs, and it has clearly given UFO hunters a lot to talk about. It is, as yet, unknown what is within these strange disks of metal. Could there possibly be the remains of ancient pilots? The fact that they are made with a thick outer layer of tungsten is highly compelling. Tungsten is the metal of choice when it comes to high temperatures, this being due to it having the highest melting point of all known metals. It is a prime choice for withstanding the heat from entering Earth's atmosphere. One of the main reasons for its use within military hardware, such as orbital missiles. The newly found disk has been transported to the Zernovsky Museum, where scientists are studying it in an attempt to establish its age and the exact composition of the materials within. Although they clearly reject the possibility of it being an alien craft, they themselves do not know exactly what these disks are, where they came from, how they came into being, or indeed what may lay inside. Earlier this year, another mysterious tungsten-coated disk was discovered in Russia by a mining company near the city of Belovo. The mysterious 1.2-meter disk was located at a depth of 40 meters within the mine strongly suggesting that it is very ancient. Archaeologists performed several tests and reluctantly concluded that the perfectly circular object was somehow made by man in the very distant past, though they severely lacked any explanation as to how that was even possible. More information regarding the objects will hopefully be made available after experts analyze them in the Zernovsky Museum in Russia. We will keep you posted. Over the past few years, we have touched upon many of the amazing and often extremely ancient sites which dot our Earth. Many of these spectacular achievements, indicating to the countless specialists, archaeologists, geologists, and others involved, attempting unraveling of their true history, their true story of antiquity. On several occasions, we have been confronted with compelling and often conclusive explorative analysis which has often resulted in the retrieval of compelling supportive artifacts which have supported the claim of them surviving past cataclysm, often accompanied by an ice age. Our sharing of this data has regularly received a mixed reception. The Sphinx, for example, which shows clear evidence of surviving this past event and subsequent ice age, which involved a flood event. We saw that many were interested in this premise, yet not convinced of such claims. However, a gentleman known as Mario Bildreps has taken this theory and, if confirmed to be correct in his preliminary findings, may have established it as a fact beyond all possible doubt. A link to his website will, of course, be in the description. Mario, it seems, has been very busy. He has correlated the orientation of over 500 ancient pyramids and temples randomly spread around the world to what he claims is a 99% accuracy to the temperature changes during the last glaciation cycles. Most ancient structures, therefore, he has concluded, are hundreds of thousands of years old and not just a few thousand. Many of the pyramids and temples have been renovated over the millennia, new structures forming on top of older foundations, while the orientation of these foundations remain unchanged. Chichen Itza and Baalbek 
are two good examples of this practice. He states that the proof is mathematically backed up from start to finish. He adds, the orientation of a building is purely mathematical, because orientation is dimensionless or not materialistic. When we process the orientations of virtually all ancient buildings around the world, it reveals a profound discovery. He claims his research is so new, so innovating, that you won't find anything like this anywhere else, except maybe some copies of this original material on other websites. About 57% of the 501 randomly spread ancient structures that were involved in this research accumulate massively in five clusters of together just 20 degrees or 22.2% along the intersection line. This line is also a purely mathematical entity that runs from our current North Pole to our current South Pole along a longitude of 47.1 degrees west. It appears a big chunk of his research has been directed towards developing a cardinal reference line, an imaginary line drawn upon the globe which could be used to match ancient structures to a past location of the cardinal points. Of course, if his mathematics can be peer-reviewed and ultimately found to be correct, he could truly be on to something. His research will not only push back the theories involving the chronological development of man, but also prove beyond doubt pre-Columbian voyage up to a half a million years ago, among many other startling realities. The collective orientation of contemporary buildings points almost exactly at our current geographic pole. You might say that the collective unconscious orients itself to the geographical pole, or as many people would say, to the sun. The more data you gather, whether it's in a region, one country, one continent, or the whole world, the more obvious it becomes that contemporary buildings add up to the geographic pole. There is no contemporary culture defined that has a preference for a specific orientation other than a cardinal orientation. It is undoubtedly interesting research, which we implore you to peruse further. We will keep you posted on future developments regarding Mario's work. In the Museum of the Unexplained in Reed Spring, Missouri, a rather peculiar artifact can be found. Known as the Bob White Artifact, Bob was driving with a friend down a Colorado highway one night in 1985, when they would both experience a close encounter. As the craft flew over Bob's head, according to Bob, it dropped him a gift, an object which has caused Bob numerous issues. Quote, I don't know about you, but as for me, every time I hear people from Skeptic Magazine lying through their teeth, it makes me sick. They say they have never seen any hard evidence of UFOs. This is only true because they refuse to look at this, a piece of a UFO. So the next time you see the Skeptic Magazine people on Larry King or some other TV program saying there is no physical evidence, you will know they are lying. I have challenged them to debate me, but they are afraid. So, Skeptic Magazine, you have been exposed for the fraud that you are. That was a statement made by Bob White in the late 90s. He further claimed that in 1996, he was flown to the classified Los Alamos National Laboratory for a detailed analysis of his evidence. White was told by senior staff that the object he recovered was indeed of extraterrestrial origin also confessing to have successfully collected another object similar to his before. Although the officials fervently denied these claims, in 2000, Bob managed to acquire U.S. Army documents dating from the 1940s titled UFOs in Denmark. In it were multiple images of an object nearly identical to the one he had. When Dr. Rudolf Olson of Carolina examined the artifact, he concluded, quote, to describe the Bob White object in the simplest possible way, I think you can say it is an agglomeration of rapidly cooled droplets or particles of an aluminum silicon alloy. With such an unusual structure, I can only speculate on how it was formed. It turns out that this artifact was free-formed, or more precisely, it was somehow cast in a zero-g environment without the use of a mold. It has been to over 15 labs and universities over the past 21 years, including Los Alamos, Sally, New Mexico, etc. 
If the artifact had been on a machine or a grinder of some sort, there would inevitably have been forensic evidence left upon the artifact. All we know is that it was in a molten state when ejected into a vacuum under extreme pressure within extremely cold conditions. Although Bob White's artifact rarely gains any attention anymore, it is clearly a most compelling piece of evidence in support of the possibility of alien visitation.